X Defiant has done a great job at providing a viable alternative to Call of Duty's core multiplayer experience. Now, there's been a bit of uncertainty over whether or not it has staying power, the staying power necessary to compete with COD long term, but the first major content drop is actually coming, and it's huge. So today, we're going to go over everything, everything you need to know about Season 1, everything that is going to change, because a lot is changing in X Defiant, plus several content updates that are scheduled to go live in the meantime. You guys let me know, are you still playing X Defiant? Welcome to the channel, Jimmy or Chaos. Thank you for all the love on the past X Defiant videos. I see you guys in the comments. Truly, truly appreciate it. Before we move on, guys, we're giving away a PS5 at 2.8 million subs. That's right, somebody on this channel that watches these videos is going to win a PS5. It's simple to enter. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like this video. Comment your Twitter handle. That's important because if you win, I have to be able to get hold of you and follow me over on Twitter. The details are the top pinned comment on the video and there's a bonus entry in those details as well. Good luck. So, first things first. Let's talk about the change that was pushed out a couple days ago. If you missed it, I'm gonna go over it for you. On June 18th, the X Defiant team released a change to weapon XP in response to criticism that grinding attachments takes too long. Before the update, weapons maxed out at level 100 with bronze camo being unlocked at level 50. Silver camo was at level 75 and gold camo at max level. So Ubisoft changed the weapon level system to now max out level 200 instead of 100. And as such, the mastery camos now have their level requirements beefed up. So it's gonna take longer to unlock them going forward. However, the trade-off for this is the fact that it now takes significantly less XP to go up one weapon level, meaning you'll be unlocking attachments much quicker than before. All the attachment unlock levels have stayed the same, not touched. So the only thing this change actually does is makes the mastery camos a bit more of a grind while making attachments easier to earn. So there's a bit of give and take with it. The community seems a tad split on the new time requirements for getting mastery camos, but the quicker attachment unlocks seem to be positively received. So Ubisoft will likely be making more adjustments to the X Defiant XP and Weapon XP grinds, but right now, as of this video, that's where we're at. Also coming before the Season 1 update is a brand new game mode, Team Deathmatch, which has been heavily requested since launch. It's funny I say brand new game mode, TDM. X Defiant is definitely a more objective-based game than Call of Duty but there's a lot of people who just want to grind TDM and nothing else, which means they'll be getting their wish on June 21st, probably by the time you watch this video, which I think is great news for objective players as well, because now the TDM players won't be in the objective modes. They won't be hurting the experience for other players. Now let's talk about season one content. There's going to be another new game mode, being the fan favorite Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag CTF is a staple in PvP shooters, and it's likely going to play super well in X Defiant on the existing maps. It's most likely that CTF will be played on the Domination and the Occupy map rotations as opposed to the Escort maps, which honestly I think that's a pretty good thing, but I'm excited to see how this mode actually plays in X Defiant. I always thought CTF was one of the most engaging and grindable game modes in Call of Duty and Halo, so I'm hoping they capture that fun factor and it's going to be carried over for everybody in X Defiant. Speaking of maps, let's talk about that. We not only know how many new maps will be added with Season 1, we also know their names. According to official sources, Season 1 will feature three new maps, those being Clubhouse, Daytona, and Rockefeller. All sound like they're going to be really fun, uh, fun settings. The maps in X Defiant are excellent so far. They're super fun throwbacks to other Ubisoft franchises, which was brilliant. From the looks of it, Daytona will be based on the crew, and Clubhouse will be based on the Rainbow Six Siege map of the same name but it's unclear which franchise Rockefeller will be based on, although it's, it's, it's possible it's not based on a franchise at all, and it's just a cool new original concept from the team. We'll have to see. When I think Rockefeller, I think money. Ubisoft has confirmed we'll be getting one new map per month, seemingly starting with Clubhouse on Season 1's launch day, then Daytona the following month, and then Rockefeller month three. I think it's a good way to split up the content without actually burning people out, so I'm good with this release schedule. Let me know if you are. There's also going to be a brand new faction added to X Defiant with the launch of Season 1 on Day 1, and that is the GSK from Rainbow Six Siege. Given Siege's popularity still, it's not shocking that Ubisoft is going to lean into this and add it quickly, and it's going to bring a lot of new skins. There's also confirmed to be 90-tier battle passes coming with the launch of Season 1. Now, the exact content hasn't been revealed in its entirety, but I'm willing to bet 
there is going to be a lot of Rainbow Six related cosmetics for everyone to grind. Given how much the GSK and the Clubhouse are being featured in the Season 1 marketing, it's going to happen. So far, three characters from GSK have been confirmed as character skins. Blitz, Jaeger, and IQ. So longtime Siege players are probably going to be smiling as they grind through to unlock them. Now, the porting of Clubhouse over to X Defiant does raise a few questions in the community as to how Ubisoft is going to be handling maps from other franchises. Is it possible that other PvP maps from other Ubisoft games are going to be ported to X Defiant? You may not know it, but Ubisoft used to have a lot of team-based PvP shooters, especially under the Tom Clancy umbrella, and I'm kind of hoping this means some of the classic PvP maps from games like Rainbow Six Vegas, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, stuff like that shows up in the future. It's not confirmed, but it's possible. If the Clubhouse remake is anything to go off of, although I feel like I should point out that it's very unlikely Clubhouse and any other map remakes are going to be one-to-one -one recreations due to the fact that X Defiant is a very fast-paced 6v6 arcade shooter, and the team will likely have to make a few layout changes in order to make the map flow better. But none of it's confirmed, but it's fun stuff to think about. And in case you didn't catch this before, the Season 1 update is going to go live on July 2nd. So just a couple weeks from the time you're watching this video. So you've got time to finish up the preseason battle pass, but you don't have that much time. So make sure you get those last few tiers up before it actually gets here. Now let's talk about the biggest change. I think it's the biggest change for season one. The full launch of Ranked Play, which has been teased ever since X Defiant came out. Ranked Play's full details will be revealed on July 1st, the day before the launch of the season. But we do know a few things already. And if you guys want me to cover the launch of the season, let me know in the comments. There's going to be multiple tiers for you to grind, just like other PvP games. There will be even official top 500 ranking group for you to try and reach with your buddies. That's smart. Now, it's unclear right now if the PC and the console player bases will be ranked differently, but from the looks of things, everybody's going to be ranked together in one giant player pool, which I think that's the way to do it. Both PC and console players have been pushing the meta forward ever since the launch of X Defiant about a month ago, and it's pretty clear that controller players can keep up with mouse and keyboard players just fine. So I don't think ranking everybody uh, separate is the way to go. But you may disagree, and I want to know in the comments if you do. It's also very likely that Season 1 will come with some highly requested changes to weapons. So far, Ubisoft has not released any balancing updates to guns, and I can understand them wanting to hold on to any gameplay changes for the big Season 1 update. Now, nothing is 100% confirmed yet, but don't be shocked if there's buffs and nerfs. If I had to guess, I would say the AK-47 will be nerfed. The snipers are going to be reworked a little bit, and every shotgun other than the M870 will probably be buffed because they're in desperate need of help. And speaking of guns, the last thing being added with the Season 1 is three new guns. The sawed-off shoddy, the L115 sniper, and the LVOAC assault rifle. I'm sure the community will be happy to get some new shotguns and snipers in the mix, but adding yet another assault rifle seems kind of odd to me. I mean, granted, assault rifles are the most popular weapon class in the game right now, so it makes sense to add more, but I don't think I'm the only one who would like to see some more LMGs, pistols, things like that getting thrown into uh, the sandbox. You let me know what you guys think. So there you have it. All the changes coming, and once it does launch, if you guys want me to cover it, definitely, definitely can happen. Make sure you guys get in on that PS5 giveaway, and I'll see you soon.